It's October, it's Adobe Max week, and that means we get updates for the app. So in this video, we're gonna go over what's new inside of Lightroom Classic. Uh, Photoshop was actually updated last month. They did their big update a little bit early this year, so you're not gonna see a new update for Photoshop this week. Of course, you wanna check out my video from last month on that one, but uh, for the time being, when it comes to updating Lightroom Classic, you wanna go in your Creative Cloud Updater app, click the Check for Updates button if you don't see it. Uh, we're on Lightroom Classic version 13. Um, sometimes restarting that Creative Cloud updater app can help. I've even heard people say restarting their computer helps. Just keep in mind, I do believe they roll these out. Um, and of course, all questions around all of that should always go to Adobe, but what I can do is I can teach you what's new inside of Lightroom Classic, so let's take a look. Uh, the first thing we'll take a look at is this lens blur panel that we have here, which is gonna allow you to create some fake blur to your photo. It's something people ask about a lot. Uh, Photoshop recently got the one of the neural filters, which is depth blur. It's been pretty popular. A lot of people wanna try to do this in Lightroom. There's really no way. You've had texture and clarity and dehaze that you could, um, you know, you could try to take those to the negative side of things. I never thought they looked good for blurring a background. Um, and that was always a job for Photoshop, but we can now try to do it here. I'd say go at this with, with mild expectations. You know, you're not gonna take a really cluttered background in a photo like this or a photo like this and really have much success with it. It's gonna work best when you have a photo that's already got some blur to the background and you wanna maybe simplify it a little bit. So the way it works, turn on, hit apply, you're gonna get a, first of all, Lightroom has to analyze the photo and we'll talk about what it's analyzing in just a second here. But working our way down, you get blur amount, which zero is nothing. It's as if you've done nothing to the photo. 100 is the maximum that'll go to. So again, moderation I think is always key here. I got this bokeh section or bokeh, depending on how you like to pronounce it. Please don't send me a message or an email on how you do like to pronounce it. Feel free to go through here. This is more of a creative setting. There is no right answer. The default for me is typically the best. This isn't something I'm gonna change, but again, creatively, if you like different shapes, uh, you can go in there and click on those. We come down here to focal range. This is probably the most important part. So Lightroom is analyzing the photo when you turn this panel on. Um, what it's also doing is finding a subject, just like the select subject masking feature would, would select the subject. So it's finding a subject here, okay? And they've got two choices. You've got the subject focus, and then you've got this point focus. So the subject focus is what we have turned on. Or you can tell it, hey, I wanna do this myself. I wanna click on the point focus, and I want you to focus you know, here instead, and click up there. Or I want you to focus there. Typically, even if you do get the focus point right, um, subject focus, in my opinion, is usually gonna look better, right? In my opinion, it usually always looks better. There's very few times where that point focus tends to, to work for this, but again, give them a try, see what your, your mileage is for that. Now we come down here to focal range. So what's happening is a depth map is being built automatically behind the scenes. You don't really get too much control over this. So you're gonna see that we do have a brush in this refine section. We can modify things in just a bit, but we don't get much control over this. Best thing I can do is tell you, turn on visualize depth to understand what's going on. And what you're gonna see are colors and you'll see those colors relate to this little bar that you see here. So the whites yellows are going to be things that are close. As you get into the oranges and some some pink colors now you have mid range in the photo as you get into some of the reds and then the dark purples now you've got the back of the photo so from front to back that's the way that this depth map works it's creating a depth um, or simulating what the depth of the photo would look like so just so you know what that is doing and what's going on behind the scenes so you can read this a little better you don't have to keep that on you can turn it off but it does help to visualize what's going on so the way that this adjustment works is it's got a little bar and you can move this bar around. If I take the left side, pin it to the left, and I take the right side and pin it all the way to the right, this is if we have done nothing to this image. Because we are saying, keep the default focal range intact for this photo without artificially blurring anything. Okay, you're getting the full focal range from front to back, almost like shooting you know, F22 or whatever. Okay, now the way that this works is, if you start to close this down, number one, the moment you touch this adjustment, you lose your subject focus. You're going all off automatically into the point focus area, okay? So if I bring this all the way to the left, what I'm doing now is I'm saying, keep 
the front of the photo in focus and try to blur everything else. As I move it over, now I'm saying, okay, let that front of the, the photo start to fall out of focus, keep the middle of the photo in focus, which we don't have too much middle ground in this photo. As I start moving it to the right now, really blur the front and try to keep the background of the photo in focus. Now, it's never going to make anything in focus for you because the background of this photo was already out of focus. So it's not gonna pull things into focus. If you had a photo that didn't have any depth to it, you'd see this and I'll show you an example in just a second here. But that's essentially how this is working. And we've created a very small focal range, a very small sliver of focus as we start to move this. Okay. Now, as we open that up a little bit, we're opening up a little bit bigger of an area of focus. Again, I'm going to go back to the subject focus, but you can see how moving this starts to adjust things. And the best thing I always tell people, play around with it. Test the extremes of it because you'll really, you'll get a much better idea for how it starts to work there. Now, the last section of this is the refined section. But first, very, very quick word from our sponsor. I promise I'll keep it around 30 seconds. Uh, swing by my learning center. It'll help you navigate all the new updates to Lightroom and Photoshop as well. Some FAQs and other links you might wanna check out. I also have a real world Photoshop AI course, which shows you how to use all this new AI stuff in Photoshop in the real world, not all the fake stuff that you see. Um, real world examples that I think will help. Also, my Photoshop how-to course has been updated to take advantage of some of the new stuff in there. And that's a great course for intermediate people that you know, you kind of know the basics and you just want a good how-to course without searching all over the place for all these different ways to do things. And then finally, my capstone Photoshop system, Lightroom system courses. Those are courses meant for beginners to get you from a beginner to a solid intermediate level. Those courses have been updated as well. So yeah, to find all the free videos as well as some of the courses that are on sale over on the website. All right, back over to our tutorial here. We were looking at the lens blur refine section. So this is where you can refine if you want to blur something that, that Lightroom didn't blur, or maybe make something, bring something back into focus that Lightroom did blur. You can open up the refine section and you've got focus and blur options. This is essentially a brush. It's an adjustment brush. So you click on blur. Let's say I wanna blur that leaf over here. You click on blur. The amount is obviously the blur amount. And then you've got your size, feather, flow options for your brush and even auto mask if you need to paint around edges. So I'm going to crank up my blur amount and I'm gonna go over here and paint over on that leaf. Maybe even down here, I think that should be blurred. In fact, let's just blur it all down there, all right? So that's where you can add some blur. You can even continue to click on the little plus button to add more. And then you can go over here to the focus section if you wanted to bring something back into focus that it blurred for you. So you know if it blurred too much of maybe these little flowers up front here, in fact, let's increase that amount. So if it blurred you know, maybe too much of the flowers that we have here up front, you can paint on those. Or uh, if it went and maybe blurred back here, you can see I start bringing that back a little bit or even the background, I can start painting back there. Again, you're never gonna bring that whole background back into focus because it was blurred to begin with, but you can see how it's going in there and bringing back uh, a little bit of what was in focus in the, the back there. So if you need to step in and modify things, you do have a section down there under the refine area. A couple things about this filter, I'd say, you know, it, it can be really useful for, I think for just, minimizing distractions. Is it always gonna be perfect? I don't think so. Um, it didn't do perfect around the hair on this photo, but for who I was creating it for, and they gave me this photo to work on for them, I, I think they would consider that's the before, that's the after. They'd probably be pretty happy that you can't see the leftover plates and everything that's going on in the background there. And I don't think they would be as critical, but it depends on your audience. You gotta look at this. I'd say, you know, always, always err on the side of being tasteful with it. And then there's certain photos it's just not gonna work on. You know, if you look at something like this, um, as we start to add some blur to this, you can see it's just not gonna, it's not gonna create it the right way. And there's nothing you can do with a brush to make what it just did to the legs there look realistic. As you start to change this depth, you can even see it even, it, it miscreated the depth map of what it's doing there as you start to look at that, you know, what's in focus, this should be the same focus, but it's not. And again, even with the brush, I don't think you're gonna be very successful at it. And then please, please, please don't, don't do something like this. 
Um, I see this all too often where, where you know, we, we try to take a photo and blur the background and, you know, that's before, that's after. It's, it's not going to look realistic. The world needs many, many less versions of fake blurred photos than it needs more. So, so use it, use it sparingly, use it where it really makes a difference and, and try to avoid actually making the photo look worse and more fake than better for this one. All right, let's move on to the color mixer here. And I thought that was actually a pretty colorful photo. So this is a good one to demonstrate it on. Now, the color mixer panel, actually the mixer part of this, because this panel used to be called HSL. The mixer part of this, exactly the same. No changes, we're not gonna go over it. But the point color has been added to work on very, very specific colors in the photo where the mixer was a little bit more general in the colors that you're working on. So if this one, doesn't sit well with you. It doesn't have to. It's really meant for people that want to work very, very closely with color and very specific colors. So you take the eyedropper and then you just click on a color in the photo, shows the little swatch there. You can click on the eyedropper and add more color points to this. You can right click on a color point and delete the swatch or delete all of them. To adjust that color, you can move these little dots around. Okay, and all those little dots do are move the hue, saturation, and luminance shift sliders below. So however you wanna do it, it doesn't matter. It's two different ways to do the same exact thing here. Now we come down to the range section. Um, I'm gonna turn on visualize range because it gives you a more, more of a visualization of what's going on here. Everything else is black and white except the color we're working on. And you can bring that range all the way down to zero. And what it's telling you is uh, I'm just gonna work as closely as I can to the very specific color you clicked on. That can be accurate, okay? It's not gonna bleed over into other colors. The problem is, is sometimes those transitions can look a little bit harsh, or as you increase the range, now it starts to bleed and feather over into some similar colors that are close to the color you, you were working on to make those transitions look a little bit more smooth and natural. So everybody's photo is gonna be a little bit different as far as what you need there, but just understand there is a range and then there's range on steroids. Uh, you got that little the flippy arrow that Lightroom has in a bunch of places. You roll that down. Not only can you control range overall, but you can control the hue, saturation, and luminance range and shift those specifically if you want to get uh, deeper into working with that. Now, the follow-up question is to this one. Well, this is obviously affecting this color in the entire photo because everything we're doing here is global. But if you go to your masking panel, I already have a mask on here. If you go to your masking panel, we're not gonna go down the color mixer. We're not gonna go down to the panels below there. Go above basic and you see all of your other masking panels. These are the ones that will affect the mask. These are still gonna always affect the global photo, but there is a point color panel inside of here too. So you can make a very specific mask and then you can also control a very specific color that's within that mask so that you're not affecting the entire photo. A tiny little feature, but could be helpful for some people is on the left-hand side, your presets panel, you will see that there is a little search box up at the top. So if you got hundreds or thousands of them and you can't find them, that's a quick way to go in there and search. And then the last thing is gonna be in the edit panels at the top with the basic panel. You're gonna see that there's a little HDR button um, that might be available for you. So this is essentially editing in HDR mode, which is different from HDR photo merge, where you're merging together multiple exposures. Um, it's not something I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk a lot about here, um, mainly because most people don't have a screen that's capable of seeing this. I can, I can see it on my screen and I can record it, but you're not gonna see it through the video because it just doesn't work like that. Um, and then most people don't have anything capable of actually viewing these images and the apps and the social media and things that you share it with aren't gonna show it to you. So what I will do, check out the Learning Center that I mentioned in the links. There are two articles in there. One's from Adobe that talks more about it. Another one is a video from Greg Benz, who another wonderful photographer, great photo educator. He talks more about it as well. So if you wanna learn more about that feature, uh, I'll refer you over to there. And as I mentioned, that Learning Center contains a lot of videos to help you navigate the new updates to Photoshop, contains some uh, updated courses that I have on sale right now, as well as a what's new in Photoshop video. I mentioned a generative fill ebook in there. That's free, you can grab that over on the Learning Center as well.